first time for this thing. Of course, it's all about. Three line behind him, fighting for position. Very close call. I see them go through here. Looks like something's going to happen. Ooh, trouble. Smoker. Great job, guys. Picked up like five spots. They're side by side, trying to close the door. That's some contact. Unbelievable job up top. Now let's go get him. Welcome to the New Hampshire 125. It's the 11th race of the NASCAR k and Pro Series East from New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Alongside Phil Parsons, I'm Rick Allen. And it is 78 degrees here in Loudoun, New Hampshire. But the skies are threatening, and that could be one of the big stories here today. We want to take a look at our point standings through 10 races this season. Just two races remain and a very tight points battle we have between Max Gresham and Brett Moffitt. Yeah, but I think Brett Moffitt needs to make something happen here. He needs to close that gap before our final race next week at Dover. And the guy who won the poll earlier today, Darrell Wallace Jr., standing by with the third man of our team, Derek Pernasiglio. Thanks, Rick. Darrell Wallace Jr. becomes the 29th different pole winner here at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway, and he does it with a brand new track record. And Darrell, fastest in practice, fastest in qualifying. Does that mean the win later? Uh, I think so. We've got to be the fastest in the race, and we'll pretty much sweep the whole weekend here we have in the K&N East race. So um, just can't thank Revolution Racing enough and U.S. Army for, you know, putting this car together for me and coming out here and putting it on the pole and being able to set a new track record. Uh, adds my name to the history books and something else. So um, just going out here and having fun, going for the win, and kind of not worrying about the points as much as we did at Greenville. So that's the biggest thing. Let's take a look at our storylines here, Rick. Always at every race track, you want to be able to turn the center of the corner, go the other direction. And how early can you get in your pit window? People say about 30 laps. But weather is going to be such an issue here, it's going to be when to pit, maybe when not to pit. Let's talk to the guy who's starting second, Eddie McDonald, a native of Massachusetts. He's with Derek. Well, Darrell Wallace Jr. may have the pole, but Eddie McDonald leads all active drivers here with three wins. And, Eddie, it's been 21 races since you won your last race, and it came at this very track. Can you do it today? Yeah, I really hope so. My crew gave me a great car this weekend. I'm really excited about it. So starting up front is definitely going to help us. Um, you know, but the race back in July, we had to come from 33rd, so that made it a little tough. Um, but I definitely would like to, to be able to get another win here, and, and I think this is uh, hopefully going to be our day. It's not the same car that you've gotten all of your wins here in the past, but how strong is this piece today? This car is almost an identical twin to that one, so it's, uh, it's really good, and I'm, I'm pretty comfortable in it right now, so I think it's going to be a, a good day for us. Well, guys, it's a twin to the car that he raced here in 2008 and 2009, and he's hoping it comes home a winner. A lot of racing action here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, and it all gets kicked off with the K&N Pro Series East. That is coming up next. Green flag right here on Speed, your motorsports authority. Welcome back to Loudoun, New Hampshire. Want to take a look at the particulars of this racetrack and this race, getting ready for the New Hampshire 125, a very flat racetrack, Bill. Yeah, you see the straightaways are banked at only one degree. So it turns a little bit progressive banking. Real, real flat at the bottom and up to seven degrees. We heard from Darrell Wallace Jr. and Eddie McDonald, the two starting on the front row. Matt DiBenedetto has good speed here at this racetrack. Yeah, he certainly does. He's a former winner here, as well as the 32 car, Dale Quarterly. He's also a former winner here. We already talked about Eddie McDonald's three wins here. The Godovics back in the field once again. Remember, Max Gresham dominated here last time the k and Pro Series was here. We'll see if there is a dominant force that comes out of this race. Coming to the green flag on the inside, Darrell Wallace Jr. takes the green flag. Saw some cars getting out of line at the back. They're going to have to get back in line here in order not to result in a penalty. One across the... Turns one and two and down the backstretch. Darrell Wallace Jr. out in front and Eddie McDonald loses second to Brett Moffitt. He takes over that spot. We see Sergio Pena on the inside of Max Gresham trying to make the move on the outside here. Gresham got a good run through the center of the corner. Thought about pulling to the outside of Eddie McDonald. Wasn't able to do it that time. There's Brandon McReynolds, Corey LaJoy side by side, the 42 and the 07. Sergio Pena, Max Gresham stay side by side for that fourth spot. Gresham looks like he's going to take it on the outside here at New Hampshire. There's no question there is an outside groove here. We talked about the fact that the racetrack is flatter at the bottom. As you move up the racetrack, you get a little bit more banking. Corey LaJoy on the inside. Brandon McReynolds making the move on the outside, trying to move up on the outside of that four of Sergio Pena. He kept his nose up there, has to 
keep the four of Sergio Pena down to the bottom of the racetrack. See what Brandon can do in this corner. Again, running the higher line. That second groove up there, Brandon McReynolds. Working to the outside of Sergio Pena. It looks like Pena still has the advantage, but McReynolds still has the left front in front of that quarter panel of Sergio Pena. A little bit of momentum that time. Oh, how about Pena now? He's looking to the inside of Gresham. Pena charging through three and four as he comes out of turn number four side by side with Max Gresham. What a great run through the center and off the corner that time for Sergio Pena. Remember that 18 car Gresham dominated this race here last time the series was here. Pena's going to take fourth away from Max Gresham. There you see your race leader, Darrell Wallace Jr. in front of Brett Moffitt. Those two separated by two car lengths. Moffitt hard into turn number three, closes the gap down to just a bumper between the two cars. Both these drivers with two wins already this year looking for number three. Sergio Pena leads the series with three wins this year. Darrell Wallace Jr., Brett Moffitt, nose to tail as they work through one and two. They're separating themselves now from that third place, Eddie McDonald, number 71. Sergio Pena has put some distance between he and Max Gresham. There's Daniel Suarez on the inside of Brandon McReynolds. Daniel's been extremely impressive when he jumped in this X-Team number 16 car. Suarez got his best career finish at Columbus two races ago. Running full time in, in Mexico in the NASCAR Mexican Tour. Having a great season over there. Chasing after Herman Quiroga leading the points in that series. Two time defending champion is going to make his truck series debut here this weekend at Loudoun. See Corey LaJoy able to get by that 18 of Max Gresham. Now Gresham looks to the inside tries to crossover moves not going to work. As Suarez still out in front of De Benedetto on the inside in that 15 and Brandon McReynolds in the 42 on the outside. That is a teammate to Suarez, Matt De Benedetto, another one of the X team cars. Two of that's two of four X team cars here this weekend. Dylan Presnell in the 14, one of the other X team cars. And Alex Bowman in the 59, our leading rookie contender. Top two coming out of turn number four. Darrell Wallace Jr. now putting a little distance between himself and Brett Moffitt. Pretty clean start to this one. The New Hampshire 125 underway. Darrell Wallace Jr. out front. And welcome back to the New Hampshire 125. Still out front. Darrell Wallace Jr. Brett Moffitt running second. Eddie McDonald is third. Good battle right here. There's Michael Cherry in the eight car. That's the battle for 13th. Corey Williams, the 88. There's Ben Kennedy, the 96 car. Ben Kennedy, son of Lisa France Kennedy. A long line of the France family in stock car racing, trying to continue that tradition behind the wheel. Had a great third place run earlier this year at Bowman Gray Stadium in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Ben has been able to run the entire series. Again, out in front, it is Darrell Wallace Jr. Brent Moffitt right behind him, though, Derek. Right now, it's a really strong run for Brett Moffitt in that double zero car. He's got two wins this year, seven top fives and seven top tens, but they brought a different car than they've run here in the past. He's got three second place finishes here, but when I asked him, why'd you bring a different car? He said to me, because we finished second. You know, that's funny. I was talking to the crew chief, Mike Grichy, down in the garage area, and he said that they finished second here last time out. He said, I went home. I got to look into my notes, and it just didn't feel right. Over the last two and a half years here, they've won twice and finished second three times. I knew we could do better. I looked at my notes. This car, I believe, is going to be better. We've learned some things. I believe we're going to have a good shot on today. Saw the gap closing between Darrell Wallace Jr. and Brett Moffitt. Also now, De Benedetto and Gresham fighting for the seventh spot. Not sure if Gresham is really holding back a little bit, maybe trying to save his stuff a little bit, but he doesn't want to give those points up. That was another four-point loss right there when he gave up that spot to Matt Benedetto. And Daniel Suarez in the 16 just in front. You see the gap. Back to Godovic, Brandon Godovic in the 46, and Dylan Presnell. We talked about he being the teammate to Benedetto, as well as Suarez. Hey, Brandon Godovic. Uh, Godovic is coming off a pair of top 10 finishes, so this season is really coming on. Brandon Godovic got his career best finish back in at this race, the last time we ran here, fourth 
And then uh, his most recent race, Greenville Pickens, where he finished in the eighth spot. This is Dylan Presnell's fifth race here this year, and he's had four ele top 11 finishes so far, doing a nice job. Things continue to heat up up front. Darrell Wallace Jr. holding on to the lead, but here comes Brett Moffitt all over the back bumper of Darrell Wallace Jr. Yeah, these guys have been not been able to get away from the third and fourth place cars, Eddie McDonald and Sergio Pena, but Brett Moffitt now is all over the back of the six of Wallace. And Moffitt having a very good three and four looks to the inside of Darrell Wallace Jr. Darrell Wallace Jr. closes the door, though, as they come out of turn four. I think Brett is showing a lot of patience right now. Looks like he may have the better car. As Derek said, Darrell Wallace has dominated the, the weekend so far, leading the practice session as well as qualifying. We see Brett Moffitt continuing to look to the inside of Wallace Jr. Now, we have seen guys make the passes on the outside. Could he be setting him up? Could be. There's definitely a groove on the outside. We've seen some passes, as you mentioned, but he's getting such a good bite through the center of the corner on the bottom, but it's hard. Ooh, a little bit of contact right there coming off of four. Brett Moffitt letting Darrell Wallace Jr. know, hey, I'm here, and I'm battling for this lead. And while they continue to battle up front, that brings in Eddie McDonald and Sergio Pena. So your top four running within five car lengths of each other. Yeah, all of them right there. Eddie McDonald, a former winner here. The rest of those three cars all with multiple wins in the series this year. Brett Moffitt once again looks to the inside of Darrell Wallace Jr. working through three and four. Looks like his nose is underneath the back of that car. Now he pulls it alongside. He's got a fender up there for a second. Making a run as they go into turn one and two. Darrell Wallace Jr. in front of the double zero of Brett Moffitt. Now the slower lap car of Scott Booley may slow down Darrell Wallace Jr. They're side by side as they go down the back stretch. Moffitt gets to the bottom. Is there going to be room through the middle? There is. Scott Booley moves all the way down the racetrack. Now, this is the furthest Brett Moffat has been up on the six of Darrell Wallace Jr. When the inner three, a good run through turns three and four, and he takes the lead away from Darrell Wallace Jr. You could see him get back in the throttle when the fire came out of the exhaust pipes well before Darrell Wallace. That was enough. So Brett Moffat takes over the top spot. Darrell Wallace Jr. running in the second position. Sergio Pena and Eddie McDonald rounding out your top four. There's Benny Gordon in the 66 on the inside of Michael Cherry. Battle for the 14th spot. Ben Kennedy, the 96, follows that, that pair. There's Chase Elliott in the ninth and Chad Boat in the 98. And all outside of the top 10, battling for position. Now battle for second. Sergio Pena looking to the inside of Darrell Wallace Jr. Battle of Revolution Racing teammates. Pena on the inside has that spot. Takes it away, and Eddie McDonald sees how easy it looks, so he wanted to go to the inside and see if he could get by Darrell Wallace Jr. He got a little bit loose, though, when he turned it, tried to turn it down underneath him. So Pena has moved up into the second spot. Wallace Jr. back to third. Here comes Eddie McDonald still running in the fourth position. You know, you may say, why, why the sense of urgency? Why did Brett Moffat try so hard to get by Darrell Wallace? Well, remember, this is a 125-lap race, but Rick, weather is coming. Weather is imminent here. Cloudy skies above Loudoun, New Hampshire. We'll be right back with more racing.